Most deformity, sir. that you can describe for the claw hand? Card test. Card test is here to specify. For polymer impression. Okay. How do you do the card test? Let's see you do it. The important thing is when you are doing this test, it has to be both hands together, either pronated or supinated, doesn't matter. And make sure that you pull it together. Ready, Ken? Now watch when she is doing it on this side. Watch her finger when she is doing it. Huh? The She will flex her fingers. They use a trick movement. Please remember, when you extend your fingers, your fingers open out and fan out. When you flex your fingers, they come together. Okay, that's... They come together and point towards the center of the fist here. So, <coughs> extension causes divergent of rays, and flexion causes conversion of rays. So she she knows that that it will help doing that. So she'll flex her fingers and she'll use the finger flexors to hold it together because she's got a weak interosseous. So that's one test. What else? Abducted digital meaning. Can you demonstrate it? Well, <laughs> Always do it on the normal side. His description is. For demonstration is not right. Okay, abducted digital meaning is right, but the demonstration is not right. So how do you check for it? Ask the patient to open out the fingers like this completely, and then tell her to push the two little fingers together without allowing them to come together. Okay. <laughs> See that? It's getting pushed. So if the abducted digital minimum is poor, immediately one side will get pressed, the other side will remain open. <laughs> That's the best way to compare. Every other test can be fallacious, but this is very reliable. Okay? Any other test? So he is checking for palm of flexion. Can I have any volunteer to show me how to check for palm of flexion? He is checking for FC. He is finished with the intrinsics. He has demonstrated only two tests. Any other test? I don't know why you call them Brook tests. Such a intelligent guy who described the test. Give him credit, no? Does it have to be a book? It doesn't have to be a book. Can you do the from and sign? Okay, do the from and sign. 
Is that right? No. That's not right. What are you checking for? Checking for the adductor pulses. Adductor pulses. Just demonstrate on your hand movement of adduction and abduction. Okay. That's the mistake. The most common mistake. Remember, any any volunteer? Yeah, come. Let's see. This is basic, third year MBBS. Hmm. What is adduction? No. You're taking it like that, adduction? No. See, the movement of adduction and abduction is perpendicular to the plane of the palm. Okay? It's up and down. Up and down. Movement of flexion and extension is in the plane of the palm. This way and this way. This is this is flexion, this is extension, this is adduction, the abduction, this is adduction. Opposition, the predominant part of opposition is abduction. The first movement in opposition is abduction. Rotation and adduction comes later on. So the pinch opposition function is not just by opposition. So if the child does not have abduction mechanism, the patient will not have this position. So you're checking for adductor policy. So you need to check for this, putting this together. Not, this is checking for flexors. Flexor pollicis brevis is a median nerve function. It's not an ulnar nerve function. However, rarely and occasionally, it may be supplied by ulnar nerve also. Because ulnar nerve, deep branch ends by supplying the adductor pollicis. Occasionally it ends by supplying the flexor pulse. So that's an anomaly. That's the norm, not the norm. So you don't have to look at anomalies now. Get the degree behind you. Look at anomalies later on. Okay? Now, so you need to do like this. Uh -huh. So what's happening? Why does it happen? She's using the FPL to compensate for the deficiency of the adductor pulse. And it's not only the adductor and the first dorsal interruption. Both these muscles are involved when you are holding the book. Right? Yeah. It's the adductor as well as the first dorsal inversion. And both being supplied with alumna, it doesn't make any difference. Any other test? So you have the card test, the Froman sign, the abductor DG minimi, and any other intrinsic function that you will check? Igawa sign. What is Igawa sign? <coughs> Heard of Igawa sign? Igawa was a Japanese orthopedic surgeon who described the test. Okay, so when you keep your palm facing down on the table or a book like this, and the axis of the hand is the middle finger. Elevate this. How many interosseae are attached here? And both of them. So the, ray, the axis is the middle finger. So you can abduct it this way or abduct it this way. So you have two levels of movement that is possible. Let's see what she does on the normal side first to check that she's understood the test. The molot book it in your tingo to anatomy. She does that well. Can you see it, all of you? Okay. Now let's see if she can do it this way. Poker. Tingo tingo to anaka. Can you see that? She can't do it. She's only doing up and down. No side to side movement because it or she are paralyzed. Igawa's test. Okay, what else you check in the hand? If you look up to Green's textbook of hand surgery, there are 11 tests described for all now. 11. Okay, I haven't seen the latest edition, the new edition which has come out. I've seen up to the Green book of Green. Uh, but until the latest one I haven't checked. Whether there's any additional tests, I do not know. So there are so many tests that are described. Okay, but you need to know at least the basics. Many, many of the examiners would know about Igawa's test. So please remember that. Especially if there's a hand surgeon around, they'll definitely ask you about Igawa's test. Who was he in, you know? That's it, okay. Anything else? Yeah, he was talking about Palmaris brevis is very difficult to demonstrate, to explain to the patient. You can do it once you understand. How to make a cupping of the hand and then check for the... So, you... you don't talk. Kai 
I can't demonstrate it too well because usually the patients don't understand it well. So you don't use it as a test quite often. But you talked about something FCU. And how are you testing? You're testing it wrongly. Kanichi, how are you doing it? Form of against resistance. But before that, you're supposed to check for this FDP of the index. That's why I said you finish with the hand first and then go to the wrist. You didn't finish the hand. You have to check for is the FDP working of little finger and this. Okay? And Madaka? Not working. Can you see that? FDP. There's some here. Why, why, is, this, why, why is, this? is this there? <laughs> no, no. Oh, that's not Allah paradox. Come on now. Allah paradox is something else completely. That's the next question that's going to come up. Hmm? The, that's the FDS. FDS is checked like this. Huh? So you knock out the action of FDP and then ask the patient to do this. He can do it well. FDS is very well contract, very well contracting. That's very good. That's, that's the way to check for FDS, huh? Those of you didn't know. Then these three function as you know, function together. You know. So therefore, the link between this and this is the link between the middle finger and the ring finger which allows this to function a little bit together. So if you open up and do myofascial release in CP children, you'll find the links very easily. So when you move this finger, the other one also moves. And when you move this finger, this one also moves in the muscle. So it's a linked muscle. That's why you have it. Not because the nerve supply is the same. Nerve supply is different. They are physically linked. Okay. Uh, FCU, how do you check for? The last test? Ask the patient to clench the fist. Work it pretty good. And then the resistance for FCU and your other finger should be palpating for this. And what to come out? I'm going to give you. Tell you. It's contracting. I'm going to give you. That's the FCR. So FCU, check it like this. FCR, check it like this. Reference, candle and candle, muscle testing and function. This is the best way to check it. Okay, clench the fist, give resistance on the other side for FCU, give resistance to the radial side of the fist for FCR. Okay? But why is it Thank important you. to test the FCU? It's working in this patient. Is there any sensory difference which can occur if there is a high and a low ulnar nerve lesion? Wait a minute, wait a minute, right? Okay? Is there any sensory deficit which can uh, differentiate also? Of course, motor F FCU is very important. The dorsal branch of the ulnar nerve gets involved when it's a high ulnar nerve lesion. Whereas it's only the digital branches which are involved when it's in the level of the wrist. So because there is a subtle difference in the sensation as well. The more of the dorsum of the palm, this area of the palm, is also in, uh, supplied by the dorsal branch. So it's, otherwise it's only the radius which you test for, right? Okay. Um, Allah paradox. Okay. Allah paradox, many students answer rightly, many students do not know. If it is a high ulnar nerve palsy, the FDP is paralyzed. Okay. So when you have a claw hand, work. when you have a claw hand, the, if the FDP is paralyzed, the DIP, can you see this? It's extended. When it is a low ulnar nerve palsy, the FDP is not paralyzed. Then this will be flexed like that. So, in a high ulnar nerve palsy, you expect more deformity. In a low ulnar nerve palsy, you expect less deformity. But, in this case, in a high ulnar nerve palsy, the finger is a little straighter. Ulnar nerve cut in the elbow, you've done a repair. After two months, patient comes back and says, Dr. Saab, my finger is looking more crooked than before. What have you done? You have made it worse. I'm going to sue you for this. I explain, I'm very happy it is doing like that because a high ulnar nerve palsy has now become low, FDP is started functioning, deformity is looking worse. So, paradoxes. High ulnar nerve should have more deformity, but high ulnar nerve has definite less deformity 
a lower learning curve has more deformity because the FDP is functioning and taking the DIP in reflection. Is that clear? Thank you. Head up. What is this plate? What is this plate? Huh? Knuckle bender splint. Remember, mostly you forget which is the dorsal side, which is the palmar side. And the examiner asks you to wear it and show you. And usually you can't handle This is a little small for me. So, it's actually... Just see this. This is a spring. And what do you want? You want the knuckle to bend. Okay, so when you want, if you can't exam, find out in the exam, just do this and see which side it is bending. That side will be this single rod side. Don't tell me, can't you? It's a little tight for her also. Okay. <coughs> I've been using it as. <laughs> mm. Okay, so it takes it into flexion and work. <coughs> so when she leaves, it passively goes into flexion. When she extends, she actively extends with the use of the extensor digitorum terminus. And when she leaves, it goes into flexion. Knuckle bender splint. Okay? Thank you.